Okay, welcome to the Wall Street's crossover show, sponsored by Admiral Markets, and with the market commentator Darren Sindon. How are you this afternoon? Very well, Zach. Lo lovely day outside. If, uh, if good day for a walk. Well, yep. walking around London. Yes, as you as you're inferring, many people were having to walk today with the tube. Who tubes, needs right? the tube? I think that we should just uh, we should just use those uh, those tunnels for other purposes, you know. Well, quite possibly, sir. So. Right. Um, the market's looking a bit more cheerful, despite the tube strike. Um, hopes of, of the impossible happening over the weekend? Yes. Um, although, you know, I, I saw uh, uh, Christine Lagarde on the, on the TV before I came out. She's talking about midnight being a deadline for Greece, you know, uh, for some reason. But, but um, the, as you say, hopes of a deal for Sunday. Um, we've been here before, of course. Um, you know my views, cynical to the last, and I, you know, I, I guess we'll be having the similar conversation on Monday morning to us, unless unless everyone comes to their senses and uh, and a compromise is reached. But I just don't see how that's going to happen. So, okay, well, I suppose we could talk about that for for, for years actually, and uh, even afterwards as well. But uh, let's go on to the um, data released over the, this morning's session. Relatively quiet day today for data, but. Uh, uh, one point of interest here, the German trade balance for May. Um, Germany is, of course, a massive exporter. Um, and no surprise to see that uh, the trade balance is in their favour. 22.8 billion was the figure that came in. That's euros versus the forecast of 21 billion. So well ahead of that and, and indeed ahead of the prior read for April of 21.5 billion. Um, so the German economy, the export economy at least, seems to be firing on all cylinders. Um, in terms of... Uh, of other data, I picked out the Greek CPI number, um, just, just perhaps to rub a bit of salt in the wound, really, as it were. Uh, this is the year-on-year -year inflation number, um, down 2.2% uh, versus the forecast of minus 2.2% and the priority of minus 2.1%. If they're still in the Eurozone next month, it will be very interesting to see um, what the number is there, because obviously... So, minus five. Well, probably so much money's left the country, hasn't it? And this, you know, the, that stifles demand, obviously, and prices uh, you know, must have fallen through the floor on the ground in the real world. So um, that would be an interesting. Well, what's interesting with that, I suppose, even if they got, even if they got the drachma back, it might not. Uh, you might, they might get inflation of five percent or three percent or something. I mean, it just they they're so deflationary at the moment that even a, a new currency might not even. Yeah, you know, a new quite value. possibly. I mean, it might not. You know, if, if they did exit, it might not be the panacea that people think it could be. I mean, there's one of the, you know so many open-ended or you know, unknowns, if you will. Uh, but that's a very good point, yeah, and one that they should perhaps consider <laughs> before they take that course of action. And then the other um, the other main news today, uh, Bank of England um, rate decision here in the UK, the MPC meeting for July. No surprise to find they haven't changed uh, their views on rates or on QE, so no change in either. Obviously, we wait for the minutes to see how they voted and what the actual underlying feeling was. But uh, status quo for now, uh, for UK interest rates. Okay, and then on to the European movers. Okay, well it's all it's all hotting up in the world of banking. Um, European banking banking stops up sharply today. I'll just pick out a few examples here. Credit Agricole in France up 3.87 percent. ING Group uh, in the Netherlands up 3.15 percent, and Deutsche Bank up in Germany up 2.61 percent. And I put this down to the Barclays effect. Um, and the hopes of, a, as you say, of a Greek deal and perhaps a turning point in the sector fortunes. So what's interesting is that as I, as, I, uh, as I was leaving the office, there was a headline doing the rounds that, uh, according to Sky News, that Barclays has been sniffing around European banking assets in places like Portugal and Italy, perhaps uh, looking to perhaps buy some, some uh, distressed assets on the cheap. So that was no, they're good at that, aren't they? Well, they are. Yeah, they did very well out of, uh, of the ramp of Lehman Brothers, didn't they, in the States? Um, so this banking, European banking sector, very firm on the back of those kind of stories, and it's it's also seen by many money managers as, as potentially one of the biggest beneficiaries of a European recovery if we got one. So that's a sector to keep an eye on. And then going the other way, uh, UK retailers are down for choice today. Uh, picked out next here, NXT in London minus 1.94% and Sainsbury's, uh, one of our bigger grocers, SBRY, LN, the ticker there, um, down 1.18%. Why are they easier? Well, quite simply because of what Mr Osborne said in his budget yesterday by by upping the, the minimum wage or the new living wage as we're, we're to call it. Um, that that raise in, uh, in, in minimum wage levels is seen as being um, something that's like to compress the margins at uh, retail groups who, who, who typically employ lots of people on, 
on uh, those type of contracts and those type of terms, um, and it's very much seen as squeezing margins over the medium term. Of course, if we if we carry on growing at the rates that Mr. Osborne's predicted, maybe that won't be such a, so much of an issue because turnover might uh, might save the day. But for the moment, the market's taking a slightly dim view of that okay. for the retailers. Okay, and on to the M and A. Uh, right. Well, today I thought we'd look at um, a couple of bits of news flow. Um, that, that show you how things can go wrong. Uh, first of all, Microsoft MSFT in the US uh, around $44.40 announced that it would cut uh, a further 7,800 jobs and take uh, a $7.6 billion charge against the Nokia acquisition it made back in September 2013. Um, this is the latest in a round of job cuts and cost cutting measures at uh, the, uh, the software giant. Well, they haven't taken a very long term view, have they? No, they haven't. They're, they're, they're uh, writing it down very quickly and in fact they paid 7.17 billion for Nokia back in uh, 2013. So the write-off. The uh, managers lose even more than they. Yes, for. yeah, and and that's seen by some Zach as signalling that they are, will exit the mobile phone business, um, which. Uh, probably a good idea. Now. Probably because obviously you know a late entrant to the business, very difficult to to see past Android and mm -hmm. iOS, and then a, 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 um, another tale of woe from from the same sort of sector, from the software sector, Symantec. Most people will be familiar with them as a provider of, of uh, online security software, around $22.99. Now they're said to be close to selling off their Veritas data storage division to the private equity firm Carlyle Group, um, for looking to, to get somewhere between seven and eight billion dollars. Um, what's interesting here is that, uh, that Symantec bought Veritas back in 2005 for 13 billion dollars. Um, has been a cash generated business for them, but it has seen very low revenue growth within Symantec stable. They were hoping um, to spin it out basically and split the company in two. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any, any appetite for that now. So Carlisle uh, stepping up and hoping that they can they can secure those assets and, and maybe affect some change to, to drive some value through them. But it just shows you, we've talked a lot about M&A recently, not all these deals that are being done at the moment uh, are gonna, gonna end happily. For, well, no, for the, new, the new economy, you tend to win big or lose big. Yeah. I think there's, tends to, there's not really much in the middle. No, so in a few years' time, perhaps we'll be looking back at some of the deals we talked about recently and wondering why they were done. But uh, anyway, a couple of stocks to keep an eye on there. And I dare say that we'll be seeing one or two more um, deals that have been done over the last few years being unwound. Marry in haste, repent allegedly, they say, don't they? So uh, perhaps that's what these people have done here. Right, data points in the US. Uh, very quiet uh, for a Thursday. We've literally got just the weekly jobless claims. Um, our, our friends come, come in every Thursday. Uh, the forecast here is for uh, new claims of around 281,000 versus the prior read of 276,000. Uh, just to give people some context about this number, if you if you put it on a chart, you can see that the four week moving average has, has basically been falling since the end of uh, February. Uh, 2014. There was a slight blip um, uh, uh, earlier in this year, but the trend has been lower. So 281, we could live with a higher number than that, might be slightly disappointing. Um, so keep a close eye on that one. And then um, the other sort of major thing today, three more Fed governors are speaking in the US at various times this afternoon. Obviously, we had the Fed uh, decision um, and, and obviously lots of press comment about what the, what they actually meant. My own view, as you know, is that uh, is that the data isn't sufficient to allow them to raise rates, even though they're saying that uh, they, they still see two rates in, or rate rises in 2015. We're running very much out of time, and I, I, I suspect that we'll be seeing one if we're lucky uh, late 2015. But my own best guess is that we don't see a move till 2016. But anyway, see what these three Fed governors have to say this afternoon. Okay, and finishing off with the movers and the levels. Okay, well it's earnings season again, as I suggested yesterday, and uh, becoming thick and fast already. Uh, Pepsi Cola, or Pepsi Cola as we must call them now, PEP in the US, uh, reporting pre the market, ninety-seven dollars ninety, up two point three six percent, and it's quite clear why that is. They beat on earnings or EPS, if you like, by eight cents, coming in at one thirty-two versus the forecast of 124, and they raised guidance by the, for the full year for growth by 1% as well, from 7 to 8%. So, um, so you know, very well received by the market. In fact, I'm surprised they're not uh, uh, sharply better uh, than, than they are. And then, uh, and then a name that we all know, and, and a product we've probably all used in the past, WD40, WDFC uh, in the US, $85.50, down roughly 3 and 3 quarter percent. Um, and they've missed, I'm afraid. Earnings missed by one cent, so they came in at 75 cents per share uh, versus a forecast of 76 cents per share. But a, a big miss on revenues, missed by $7 million. They came in at 92.5 million 
versus a forecast of 99.4. So quite a meaningful miss on revenues. And as I say, they're, they're down by 3.74%. In terms of levels today, as you say, European equities are a bit better, so we've, we've raised the, the benchmarks here. Uh, FTSE 64.90 on the downside now, plays 65.80 uh, on the upside. That's really just around the, the recent range. Uh, the DAX, 10,870 is our downside level, and 11,000 I've gone for uh, on the upside. Interested to note that that's back above its 200-day moving average now. Uh, for the S&P, uh, 20.44 to the downside, plays 20.52 to the upside. Uh, nice and tight, not quite sure what the direction is going to be today. Obviously, set off yesterday, but that might have been more about the, the New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that didn't help anyone. Being out of action than anything yeah. more sinister. <laughs> and the Dow, similar story here, 17,500 on the downside, plays 17,665 to the upside. Currency wise, no, no great shakes really. Euro a little bit firmer, so 110.18 now on the downside, plays 111.16 on the upside. Really searching for direction and I guess that's that's pretty much going to be Greece dependent. Um, Aussie dollar, US dollar, 73.90 the downside here in the Aussie dollar and 74.82 the upside level. Dollar yen a smidgen better, 121.12 now the downside level plays 121.90 to the upside and cable largely unmoved by the budget it must be said. Uh, 153.53 our downside level plays 154.12 to the upside. It stabilised a little bit anyway yeah. there. Okay well that uh that wraps up the Wall Street crossover show for today. Thanks for Darren. Thanks to Darren Sinden, market commentator, Admiral Markets, uh, for coming in, and uh, we'll have more of the same this time tomorrow.